There are certain places in our homes where we leave items out because we think it's more convenient. For example, we leave something on a counter because it's easier for us to grab it the next time we need it. We see this happen at lots of different places in our home. The kitchen, the bathroom, the living room, the office, the bedroom. Items like this. We leave small appliances on our kitchen counters. We leave toiletries beside our bathroom sink. We leave office supplies on our desktop. We leave DVDs on the entertainment system or tools on our tool bench. Art supplies, keys, canisters, magazines, newspapers, a knife block. By leaving these things out in the open, we think we're saving time when we need them, and we think we're simplifying our lives. But the result is anything but. I call this the convenience fallacy, and it's a huge source of the clutter in our homes. Sure, by leaving them out, we might save a couple of seconds when we want to grab one of them, but for the other 99.9% .9 of the time, they're sitting out where they create visual distraction, get in the way, add to the disorganization of our spaces, and attract more clutter. Consider those old CDs you've held onto for years in a CD tower in your family room. Since it would take very little time to pull a CD out of a storage cabinet and put it back in when you're done, wouldn't it be better to store them out of sight instead of where it's contributing to clutter and acting as a visual distraction in your space? The same goes for most, if not all, of the things we leave out for convenience sake around the home. They usually spend far more time as clutter than in service to our lives and our environment. For example, if you make toast for breakfast, it will take you roughly three minutes to toast your bread. After that, the toaster will sit unused on your countertop for the next 23 hours and 57 minutes. Is leaving the toaster out where it's taking up space and creating distraction worth the few seconds you will save, pulling it out when you're ready to drop your slice of bread into it in the morning? Think of all the times you've needed to move it, to clean around it, or behind it, or had to shuffle it around to create more space for working on your counter. Rather than allowing these appliances to take up space, find a home for them in an easily accessed part of the kitchen, such as a cabinet or on a shelf. When you do, you will immediately reduce the amount of visible clutter for both you and your guests. Lots of people immediately dismiss this idea of putting everything away, but almost everyone loves it once they try it. So I encourage you to give it a shot. You'll love it more than you think. Here are five steps to begin overcoming the convenience fallacy in your home. Number one, first, notice. Look around the room you're sitting in right now. Maybe you're watching this in your living room or your bedroom, an office, or maybe you're near your kitchen, or maybe you have to wait until you get home. But when you do, look around and see the convenience fallacy at play. A coffee maker, a teapot, a blender, a video game controller, a stack of unread magazines or newspapers, a stapler. Take note of how many items you leave out simply for convenience sake. Number two. Clear unneeded possessions from cabinets and drawers. One reason, understandably, people leave items out on a visual surface is because their cabinets are so full. They don't have space for those appliances to be put away even if they wanted. In order to overcome the convenience fallacy in your home, you'll need to minimize the possessions that are hidden away. But once you've gotten rid of the things in your drawers and cabinets and under the sink that you don't need, you can put more things away and keep that counter beautifully clean. Number three, find a new home out of sight. Organizers will tell you it is best to keep the most frequently used items in front of rarely used items so they're easier to reach, and that's good advice. Which of the items on your counter really do get used and on what basis? Keep the most frequently used items stored out of sight, but near the front so that they're easy to get to. In my home, that means the toaster and the coffee maker are in front of our kitchen cabinet, while the teapot and the hand mixer, on the other hand, are in the back, and the canisters of baking goods are kept in the pantry. Number four, be intentional at the beginning to store items away. Habits can be tough to break. Once you've found a new home for your convenience items, be intentional and diligent to put them away, especially at the beginning. After a short while, you begin to appreciate the empty space and those items will feel like clutter when you forget to put them away. But at the beginning, 
you'll need to reprogram yourself through intention to put things away immediately after each use. And number five, take special note of the new empty space. There is wonderful possibility in empty spaces. It keeps our eyes, minds, and our attention focused on other things than physical possessions. An empty space can be used for anything at any time. It's like energy is free to flow in the room. And an uncluttered space is less likely to attract more clutter. Notice these benefits as you clear surfaces and keep them clutter free. There are many different factors that contribute to the clutter in our home. The convenience fallacy is one of them. Now that you are aware of it, notice it in your home and I'll work to notice it in mine. And together, we'll live more focused, intentional lives centered on the things that matter most.